so you want to catch it up later and we are going to I'm going to share my screen there you go and we're going to start with the first not not the first one but it's one of the most basic ones right it's like the first assignment type of lesson you guys will see and learn and this one of course is pretty simple the idea of this particular assignment is for you to get like familiarized with the platform in general uh the the python code again it's simple maybe something we should uh, talk about is the test how to read these tests and even though we have mentioned them you guys will see that we are doing like these assert things and it's something you guys shouldn't be um, like afraid of it's pretty simple the idea is that we will we will ask you to do something right and we will expect you to complete that thing and we're expecting some outcome so we need to to make sure that that outcome outcome sorry um, fulfills a certain condition so to put it in practical terms in this first one what you guys have to do is fill your name right here you have to put your name so I'm gonna put my name here and how would you say so there you go. how would you say that I will if you should I mean you're reading this assignment with your human eyes and you understand that I have just completed right you know that I have just put my name here but how do you train a computer to, to make sure that I have completed it correctly? The only way we have here is if we can scan this code, right? The computer can scan this code. And what we're telling it is just check that the your name variable, which is starting empty by default, is this, this is how the assignment starts or looks like when we just run it, well, sorry, when we just load it check if your name is still empty if your name is still empty the variable your name is still empty then this assignment is not complete so that's the test you guys are saying right here it's assert that your name is not empty if the name is empty i will leave it empty just for you guys to sit and i will run this test you guys will see this error right that says that assertion error assert that these thing we're expecting the your name variable is not empty but it is empty so that's why it's failing right um so this that's why you guys will see these weird tests that actually are these are common practice they are they're an industry standard you guys will as, as you make progress with these courses you will get a lot from the industry right we try to stick with good practices and this is a really common pattern again, testing. And sadly, we have to kind of, um, I don't know, we have to come down to a simple solution that a, a computer can understand. Ideally, my test here, how could I check if you have completed this assignment correctly? Ideally, I would know, I would know your name, right? So, um, I don't know, let's see here, um, Bob, for example, that just said hi, hi Bob. I would say, if your name here was, I don't know, um, Charles, I'd say this is Ben, because I know your name. So I'm gonna say, I'm expecting you to put Bob here, and I can handhold you through this solution, you know, and I can provide a lot of detail about it. But sadly, this is not something that we can do automatically, because computers, again, they're not that smart. The only thing that I can check is that in this case that the your name variable is not empty. So that's what we're doing right here. So once I have created the, um, I have put something in your name variable. If I run the test again, there you go. It passes. You guys see the green dot, and I can just submit the entire solution. Usually, um, the individual assignments will have more than one test, so submitting the solution will have a different impact. We will you first save your solution so here you see i've saved my solution in case you want to come to this later and i don't know check it again and also it will run all the tests um so let's get started with a few of these and again if you have any questions just post them the idea is to raise questions here 
And here what we have is we have a few in, uh, numbers to work with. We talked about data types in general in our previous class. And we said that in these numbers, big numbers category of data types, we have like two important players. One of them is gonna be integers, right? All the integers are one important category under numbers. And then we have floats. And of course the difference is that floats have a decimal part and integers, they don't, they're just whole numbers. So here what we're just asking you to do is simple. We need you to fill the numbers and the most important part here is for you to get familiarized with the literal notation. This is usually called a literal notation. You're creating numbers as you see them, as you humanly see them. If I ask you to write the number five in a piece of paper, you will write exactly this thing. And this is the same thing that you do in this code. You know, it's not like we have to find any, um, I don't know, we, we don't have to express, for example, five in terms of binary numbers, which is actually this. We, we, we can just do five, literal. We can just write the number right in there. And the same thing here, so one half, um, it's gonna be 0 0.5 and pi is going to be 3.1415, right? So something interesting that we saw, and by the way, I can run, and by the way, the tests, sorry, one more thing, the tests are kind of giving up the answers in this case. It's like, we're, again, what are we testing here? We need to test your solution. We need to see if you made these, uh, if you completed these assignments correctly. Um, one is going to be, it needs to be one, the variable five needs to be the number five, the variable 800 needs to be the number 100. There is nothing else we can do to just give away the answers in this case. So of course if we run them, it's what you guys are expecting to get. Let me switch for a second and show you something interesting in terms of floats and integers that it's going to be Actually, let me go back again to Python 3, and I'm gonna express one half as one divided by two, right? So if we, if I Google one, divide, one divided by two, let's hopefully, there you go, the result is 0 0.5, right? I'm gonna use this solution, and I think this should work. There you go, it works, because if I print here, Let's just print uh, one divided by two, or actually one half. The var increase the size of this thing. There we go. So if I print this and I run code, I just run this code, I have that it's 0 0.5. But I'm gonna switch now to Python 2. And I'm gonna run this same test again. And what you guys will see is that this test is failing. And if I run this code, you guys will see that one half in Python 2 is, is zero, right? So they have different values depending on the Python version. Python 3 is 0 0.5, Python 2, it's gonna be zero. Let me show you a different example. If we do print, and here we're gonna use um, five divided by two. What is, how much is five divided by two? I'm gonna just do it here. Five uh, divided by two. So, so just for the sake of the number to sit clearly in the calculator, it's of course 2.5. If I run this in Python three, you guys will see that that is the correct value, 2.5. But again, if I run it with Python two, you will see that it's two, which is wrong or of course, pi, five divided by two is 2.5. The issue with Python 2, and as you can see already, it was fixed in Python 3, is that Python 2 wasn't that smart. In Python 2, uh, what Python 2 is kind of interpreting here is that you're trying to divide an integer number by an integer number. So the result that Python 2 is gonna give you is an integer number back. Python 2 kind, kind of knows that the result is 2.5. But again, it's kind of trimming this because it wants to give you back an integer number, a whole number. You are, the first operand is five, it's an integer. The second operand, two, is an integer. So the result is gonna be an integer. 
And it, that doesn't matter if that's not precise. Um, so to make this work in Python 2, what you have to make is turn any of these operands into a float. So in this case, we're gonna do 2.0 right here. So here, what we have is that Python, will, Python 2 will interpret, this is an integer and this is a float. So it's gonna say, now I can give back a float. There you go, so we have 2.5. So if we make the solution, the, for example, 2.0, and we, oh, no, sorry, and I run the test, it should now pass. So it's just differences, issues that um, you guys will see in Python 2 and Python 3. Our idea, we, we prefer Python 3. I, I think we didn't receive this question on Monday, but um, we prefer Python 3, to be honest. We think it's a great improvement. Uh, it will be easier for us just to go with Python 3 all the time. It's just Python 3 is better in our, in our view. But the truth is that the shop market out there still requires Python 2 because there are many, many, many programs, right? There is a large code base still running on Python 2. So it's important for you guys to see the differences, you know, understand and, and know the differences. All right, so let's move forward. I don't know if fun with strings is one that uh, is interesting enough. If you guys have questions, just post them in the Q&A part. I wanna, maybe one of these assignments didn't make much sense, so you guys wanna go over it again. So here the, the, the tests are asking you guys to do a few things. The first is to define an integer. And if you check with the previous one that we had, we have this question mark here and hopefully you will raise the question like, can I use single quotes or double, or double quotes? You can use any. And then we're asking you to compute the length of these variable, which is as simple as doing the length of the remoter domain variable. That's it. So I can just run these two. That's it. Um, a string length, I think we don't need to go concatenate strings. This is interesting. Strings are powerful. Um, comp I don't know if you have had a chance to work with other programming languages before, but strings in Python are, they're well thought. They are, they're, they're a good example, an example, sorry, of good design, but seriously. One thing that happens with strings in Python is that they are immutable, right? So that means we cannot change one string. We can create new strings by getting previous, previously created strings and combining them, but we will never be able to change this string. Once this thing is created, it's sealed, this string, it's sealed, and we cannot change it. We, again, might create a new one. And we can, we can even, create a new variable, or actually the same variable, with a different good pie, with a different string. We are changing completely this variable to a new string, but this string is never changed. Once it was created, that I have just put it, you know, I just finished this line, this string is gonna live in memory for the, like, the rest of the code or, or the program running, and it will never be changed. And this is a really good thing about Python. So here concatenating strings is really simple. Here, what we are trying to, for you guys to do is to um, start looking at the documentation maybe, you know, start Googling things, which is perfectly fine. And here what you will have to do is just to um, hello, the variable hello, plus word. As as we saw in our previews in our in our class, the plus operator will mean different things for different. Uh, oh, by the way, this test is broken, but uh, this is correct. This solution is correct, and we're gonna fix it after these twenty-five. So maybe the solution is gonna work. Um, so finally, we kind of get into the most interesting portions of this first week that are the if statements, of course. 
And here, what you guys need to do is we start this message variable equals to none, right? So the idea of this message variable is to get, we don't need to initialize variables as you guys know, but we will start with none just to make sure that you change it at the end. If I put a wrong condition here, let's say that one equals to zero, is one equals to zero? No, this is of course false. So this is never going to be a run. So my result, if I run it, there you go. You will see that message is none, right? So here you, you what you guys can read is that mess I am I'm expecting message to be equals to hello world. I am expecting assert that message is equals to hello world. But in reality, message started as none here and I never changed it. So message here is equals to none. And of course, none is not equals in hello world. It's expecting message to be hello world, but message sadly is none, so that's why it's failing. So um, what uh, you guys have to do is just somehow make this condition pass. You can do whatever you want. You can just do if true, you know. Um, you could just fake this assignment and do, and do this. Of course, it's not the idea. But um, just to what we try to do here is just for you guys to get familiarized with the syntax. That's it. Um, maybe the column, the indentation, the variable, and that's it. And of course, you run the code, you will see the hello world part here. Um, sorry, we have a few questions. Um, good point, Bob. So let me go back again to the concatenate one. So this one right here is failing because the test has a different name and I will fix that after, right after this session, it's simple. Um, but yeah, so it's expecting things to have uh, a space, good catch. So here, our final solution should be something like hello plus an empty space plus a world. There you go. That should be our final solution. Um, so we kind of, again, we're making progress. The idea of this entire week is to start making progress into control flow structures. And one important part here are operators, right? Operators are fundamental in order to build meaningful conditions. If we have more than five users, if this user has created his or her account, I don't know, uh, before this particular date, so the date of creation is lower than a given date, you know, so you're using operators to compare quantities and to compare conditions, right? So here we wanna, what we need is to turn message one into hello world. So what we're gonna do here is, of course we, x is already 10. So what we're gonna do is, if x is equals to 10, then message should be this. And if x is different from uh, here, we can just do whatever we want. Um, 11, um, hello, whatever it's gonna work. 11, for example. These things should work if I'm correct. There you go, so those work. Um, you guys will find many different types of operators. There is a guide in the slides that we had in our previous class. Um, the idea of the operators is that you will kind of start learning how they are categorized. Again, there will be operators that are more like mathematical operators, like a compare or, or like more, um, how to put it, like you will have like these Boolean operators, right? Like if X is equals to something, is greater than something, is less than something, is greater or equals in something or is less or equals in something. And then you're gonna have operators that are gonna perform concatenating other operators. So if X is equals, so for example, if X is um, less, sorry, different than 11, and x is greater than five, for example. So you're starting to concatenate 
your conditions because again in real life usually these conditions arise right it's like um if the user is if today is the user's birthday and it's the first year that has been using our app we're going to show a special message for example so we need to that end we need to concatenate these things if today is um i don't know the first day of the month and we have at least one user has registered for more than three months we're going to do something so we're concatenating operators so you guys will see like these operators that again will let you compare things internally like this variable equals different greater less than a given value or another variable and then you will have operators that will be used to kind of concatenate other operations and then you will have a few operators you will see that are for example if um, not x for example if not x so x started maybe as none right so this reads clearly if not x right user we're going to do something like um, user search user users by name and you pass a given name I know name equals Tom and let's see if we have a, at least one user that has that is that has uh, Tom as a name so then we're gonna do something like if not user print the we we don't have no Tom's like Tom doesn't exist as simple as that so here what you guys are seeing is that we have like this not operator that it's also an operator it operates in a variable but it's just one variable these operators are operating in two different values x different than 11 in this case it's not this value so slowly we'll start making these different categories and they will start making more sense and finally here uh, how many operators Dimitri is asking how many operators we can concatenate together can we go and create two or three combinations yes you can uh, you can um, you can concatenate as many operators as you want like seriously you can put um, I don't know X greater than 5 and X less than 20 and user equals I know um, Jordan and the issue you are gonna of course face is that first usually in real life we don't need those many checks so if you're finding yourself putting too many conditions here it's that probably you're not looking at the domain in in the best possible way maybe you can break this thing down into smaller chunks and then of course if you do need to put them all in just one line it's gonna hurt readability or right? it's gonna be really hard to read that's gonna be a, a niche uh, but yeah you can concatenate as many operators as you guys want um, so this particular example we had a we are using the greater and less than operator to find of course we have to make these two if if statements true we need this condition to be true and we need true and we need this condition to be true so here if we put for example five five is less than 20 so oh, five we put x five so five is less than 20 python is great um well sorry i need to remove these ones there you go so the second one passes because five is less than 20 but the first one will not pass because it's expecting five to be greater than 10. so here i have to put of course here are the limits the limits are 10 and 20. any number between these limits without included less limits actually the the actual numbers we can use are probably uh, from 11 to 19. any of these numbers will make this code work so for example 15 is between 10 and 20 and here we're gonna run it again 
you guys see that it passes. Um, and finally, this is a, an interesting one because we are seeing another operator. Up to this point, you guys have worked with probably operators like plus, minus something. In this case, we'll be working with a different one. Um, so here we need to answer if this number is divisible by this number, by 11, and if 911, 911 is divisible by 11. So we have a few variables that will have the final solutions, and then we just need to complete the code. So here, what we need to do is, if the number 583 is divisible by 11, we want to run this thing. In other case, we'll run this thing. So here, the only thing you guys need to do is just something as, actually, let me show you. You will need to use the modulus operator. So I'm gonna use it first. I'm gonna show it to you isolated first, and then we can just complete the assignment. So we have this modulus operator, which is not division, by the way. This is division one, it's just a slash. The percentage symbol is gonna be used for division. So if you guys have a number, for example, five, and you do five divided by two, what do you have? Again, we know this is 2.5. But the, re, the modulus is, usu, is used as usually called as the reminder of a whole division. If you guys have five things, five things, right? And you want to divide them in chunks of two things, right? This is what you're trying to do. And you want the result to be the whole numbers. Like, let's say you, you have apples and you want to divide them by two, right? In different baskets. But of course you cannot, not of course, but you can't just split an apple in two. It's like, how many apples am I going to put in each basket? Or how many baskets will I need? I need 2.5 baskets? No, I need, I can put these two apples in one basket, B1. I can put these other two apples in another basket, B2. And I have just one apple that doesn't fit in any basket, sadly. So this is the reminder of the division. If I do five divided by two, I get to fit two parts, if you want, two combinations of, of elements, and I have one reminding. So that's what the modulus operator is doing right here. So the modulus operator, to put it simple, I'm gonna do print, find modulus two, Again, remember you had five apples in the first basket, sorry, two apples in the first basket, um, two apples in the second one, and the reminder is just one. This is the one we can't fit. So this result will be, let me command this now, one. All right, so that's the reminder. So to check if a number is divisible, sorry if this is too obvious for some people, I just wanna make it really clear. For everybody, this is a programming class, it's not a math class. Um, so to check if something is divisible, it's just the reminder should be zero. So if five divided by two, no. How do we know that it's not divisible by two? Because the reminder is great, it's greater is or, or different than zero. So if any reminder, that means the number is not divisible. So is seven divisible by two, for example? No, because it's also one. Is eight divisible by two? Yes, because this is zero. So if the, ring, the modulus operation between a number and what we're trying to find if it's the, the, um, if the divisor or not is zero, we get to the conclusion that this number is divisible by this number. So what I'm gonna do here is just, if number eight, five, sorry, 583 is modulus, sorry, modulus 11 is zero, then this thing is gonna be true. And just to put it in numbers, 583 modulus 11 gives us zero, which means it's divisible. 
And the same thing, so let's do 9.11. There we go, so this is not divisible. So here we're gonna do the same thing. If number 9.11 is divisible, if modulus 11 is equal to zero, we're gonna do it. So finally, if we print these two variables, I'm gonna just print it to see them. Print is 9.11 divisible by 11 and is Five. There we go. So if I run it, I see the first one true. The first one, the five eighty three, is zero. So it is divisible. True. The second one is false. So here, this is exactly what I'm expecting. I'm expecting nine eleven not to be divisible. I'm expecting five eight three to be divisible. All right, any questions before, like we are, this is pretty much the whole entire week. It's, we know it's rather simple for some folks, but uh, we also know that some other people are, you, you, like you're probably starting. So there are so many things together, right? Like conceptually, everything is simple, but then we have these moving parts, like combining odd if statements with indentation, with running tests, with, printing with all the moving parts conceptually you might know that eight that 583 is divisible by 11 because you can do the math but then expressing that in code it's the hard part and that's exactly what we're trying to achieve here it's where usually from our experience you guys have a good background in programming but um what you might find difficult is to turn it that into code into code it's like if, if I give you a calculator, you know that 583 is divisible by 11, but how do you express that in code? Right? If I ask you, if you have an idea to build something, right? you have an idea, you wanna build something, a website, you have worked with some, some data or something, and you know what you have to do, you have the steps, like I need to first check these servers, and I need to check that, and I will need a user authentication part, I will need a user to sign up, and sort of, you know what you have to do, but it's difficult to express it in code. So that's what exactly what we're trying to do here. So questions, we can, um, I think, conclude this session. Maybe this week is too simple. Yes, Dimitri, we have it. Yes, it's a good question, actually. We, so, uh, sorry, if you mean something like in JavaScript, x equals 11, um, like, no, how is it? Yeah, true. I don't remember how it's in JavaScript. But in Python, we do have it, and it's, um, you will do something like, uh, if, I don't use it that often, true, no, I know. So let's compare the, the JavaScript one first, start with five. So it's gonna be something like, JavaScript, Java, all of these other languages, it's gonna, it's gonna have the expression first. It's gonna be x greater than, than two, for example. And if that happens, uh, true. And if it doesn't happen, false. Something like that. In Python, it's a little bit different. It's gonna be um, if five is greater than, sorry, x is greater than two, then, you know, True, else, false, I think. Let's actually look. It changes the order of the operations. I don't know if this is what you meant, like the Boolean ternary operator with if statements. I assume it was it. Um, oh, there you go. It's you're gonna express what you wanna get. Is this, this definition is pretty good. A, if condition, else B. So you're gonna do something like, if X is greater than five, I wanna say greater than two, sorry, than two. If, great, if X is greater than two, I'm gonna say greater than two. If it's not greater than two, I'm gonna say um, less or equals than two. So you're gonna say greater than two, 
if, and here you put the condition, else, and here you put the other one. So it's going to be less or equals to. Right, so this is what you will end up with. It's a little bit odd. Greater than two, less or equals to. So it's a little bit odd um, because you start like you combine the truth branch with the condition with the false branch. I don't know, it's weird, but uh, it works. I don't use it that often, to be honest. I prefer to express things. In this case, I would prefer to express it in, um, in an if statement or with some Boolean operation logic that it's a little bit more complicated, but it's going to be something like um, x greater than 2 and greater than 2, for example. Or it's, it's a little bit more complicated, but um, I, I don't use this operator that much, but you guys are, of course, free to use it. Um, what is that? Uh, print. Let me copy this here to see what you guys were trying to do. Um, if print enter h, if h is different, thanks for enter else print, you did not enter your h. Uh, so you want to check if these things are. So if you input here a string, it's going to fail because you're turning this into an integer. So there is no way, there is no simple way right now, there is a way of course, but there is no simple way right now to check if something is a string right here because you're, as soon as you're asking for the input, you're turning into an integer. That's the issue with this particular code. Um, so, Ricky, you mean the previous operator that we had, this one? So we have the the traditional the traditional if and <clears throat> if statement. If x is greater than two, then do something, do something um, else, do something else, right? But then we have this ternary operator that what it does, it makes, it's, it's an expression oriented control flow structure. So this thing right here is not an expression. Here I'm throwing a few fancy terms, but basically can you assign a variable to the result of this? It's exactly this. You wanna make result equals to a given variable based on a condition. So here what you will do is you will do res equals greater than two, right? And uh, right here, we're gonna do res equals less or equals to two. But um, in this case, this is kind of um, re a repetition. It would be great to do something like res equals this thing, you know? And somehow you could, I don't know, like pass, I don't know, I'm just making this up because this doesn't exist, right? Or else pass this thing back. No, so this is, this could be an expression oriented if statement because you can expression because you can just assign this whole thing to a variable, the result of this whole thing to a variable. But as this thing doesn't exist, we have the, this ternary operator that will allow you to write the entire thing in just one line. There you go. The important part here is that here in these in these blocks of code, you can put as many statements as you want. You can have many, many, many statements, and you can do whatever you want here. You can connect to a database, send an email. You can do whatever you want in these chunks of code. In these ones, you won't be able to do that because 
it's just one statement. Just do something, and this something will be returned and assigned back to this variable. So that's the limitation of this particular block. All right, so I encourage you guys to just keep practicing. Um, we're starting our second week pretty soon. You already, you can already see the uh, uh, um, the contents of the second week. Good question. I'm going to go over the function arguments really quickly, but that is a, something that we're going to go over in our next class. But uh, here, um, you, are, you can already start with the function part, right? So you can start practicing functions. Um, so the, both the functions, let's answer both questions at the same time. And we can probably pick one of these, your first function, maybe this one. Um, no, this one doesn't cover arguments, function arguments. This is much better. There you go. So the def keyword is used to create functions. We're gonna talk about functions in our next class. We're gonna spend like one hour talking about functions. So don't worry that much if you guys don't get it completely. First thing, function arguments are gonna be just, you can think of a function as, um, as a unit of, of functionality that's gonna be generic. If I ask you, so what happens if I ask you to multiply something by two, right? You can do always, if I give you five, you can do five times two or five times, or sorry, 10 times two, or I don't know, nine times two. So you're repeating this part. So what the function is going to let you do is kind of up, like merge this functionality, put it all in just one unit, and then you will be able to just invoke the unit that will be the function. But of course you wanna pass parameters because you wanna, um, you wanna say what you wanna create with that function. In this case, what you wanna say is multiply by two, but what should I multiply? Multiply by two, five. So you guys can think about different functions. For example, wanna send an e a welcome email to the user when the user have just, has just registered. So we're gonna have a function that's something like self send welcome come email right pass here we're gonna do logic to send the email but who are we going to send the email to to a user so we're expecting here to receive a user that will be the one receiving our email so here i will then be able to do send welcome email to i don't know um rob at remoter.com or i don't know mary or i don't know jane right so i'm using the same function but i'm passing different users and of course they are all going to get receive the email so that's why you will use the parameter it was just a way to um personalize right the function or configure the function Again, we have an entire class on Monday. We're gonna talk in depth about functions. Um, so again, guys, we encourage you to keep practicing as much as you can. Um, it's just what you guys need to do right now is practice. You might understand the concepts, you need to turn that, those things into code. That's what you need to do. The only way to learn how to code. Jason, anything else we might be forgetting? No, nope, you did it. <clears throat> All right. All right, guys.
How about the best of night today, if it's a night for you, if it's morning, have a good morning. Um, we have one more question. Oh, yeah. Yes, you can just go to python.org and download the main C Python implementation. But um, REPL is good. I mean, you can go ahead and try it. Like, go ahead and try it. It's uh, just, I'm going to paste the Python, the download page in the chat. And um, by the way, try to download Python 3 if you guys can. Um, Dimitri, we will talk about variables, but uh, I think we will not cover scope in that much detail because it's a little bit more complicated. It's something, actually something we talk about in our advanced Python course, so you might like realize that it's a little bit more advanced. We will touch on it. Um, feel free to ask like whatever is confusing you through, like during the class when we are dealing with the topics, just feel free to ask about it. So maybe we can like uh, unleash, uncover the basics, but it's, a, it's an advanced concept, like seriously, global scope, local scope, closures, all those things. So um, here's the, the URL to download the Python shell. Go ahead and download it. Um, or like in YouTube, there are good guys to to install them and make it work. Make sure you download Python 3. That's better. If you want to try Python, so of course, be our guests, but um, we recommend Python 3. All right, guys, see you all on Monday. Have a great night or morning or afternoon and keep practicing. That's what's gonna make you guys great programmers. Goodbye. Bye, everybody.